Is Acheron the emanator of finality, like Aventurine suggested at the end of 2.0, or is she a self-annihilator? What exactly is she? Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Acheron and who exactly she might be. Just a little theory before the story pops out next week and actually probably tells us everything fully, but I just wanted to talk about it because this past week we've had quite an interesting few reveals. We've had two animated trailers back to back, showing us how Black Swan found out about Acheron whooping Ifrit's ass into the void. And in the description of that video, we had a lot of lore given to us about the dual planets Izumo and Takamagahara. We then had a lore trailer showing us visually what happened and giving even more details about Acheron's origin. Now, I will say before I continue, I do not play Honkai Impact 3rd. Everything you're about to hear is from the perspective of someone who's a Honkai Star Rail player. I do not play Honkai Impact 3rd. I only know very little information about that game. And if you guys have anything to add towards this, please, when you're done with this video, please let me know in the comments down below any key information I'm missing from that game that could help with these theories. All right, then let's get right into it. So from what we've gathered, the two dual planets were intertwined or connected via a pitch black sun, which we do see in the lore trailer. Now, for those of you who haven't gone and read the description in the initial animated trailer, there are some extra details that correlate with the story told in the second trailer. The 12 blades slash sentinels referred to in the lore trailer actually had another name. These were called Edict Edges. Now, Edict is an interesting word to take from here because its meaning is it's an order given to somebody by authority. So for example, like a king or a sovereign, you, anyone can give an order, but when it's given by someone of that, like position in power and authority, it becomes an edict. It can be known as an edict. The first edict edge forged was by slaying the sovereign of revelation and using its bestial body to forge it. But to do this, it took the whole might of the entire country just to slay that one Kami. This is confirmed via the dude asking questions in the trailer when he mentions 70,033 blades were splintered. I know there's an updated number, we'll come back to that. Now, what can an Edict Edge actually do? Well, it's said that the wielder of these swords can recite the mantra contained within the blade to master the divine power of Takamagahara and use it to combat the Kami with a taste of their own medicine. I guess this is also where the name Edict comes from for their naming sense, you know, since they can like word for word, bar for bar, use the Kami's power. And the first one was named the Sovereign Revelation, Sovereign, Edict Edge, Authority. They can now claim their authority as their own and use it to smite them. I think that's a pretty cool aspect. So we know that after this, that they then use this newfound power to slay more Kami and use their bodies as well to create even more Edict Edges, forging the 12 Sentinels. Now a Sentinel itself is sort of like a guardian. I do find all these unique words interesting when added with context because a sentinel was usually linked with an aesthetic appearance of a shield, right? Now, I can imagine, since Izumo was always being evaded by the Kami, these blades came off as guardians to them. They were their protectors, so hence the 12 sentinels. Now, over the course of 10 Amber Eras, Izumo thrived with the light of the 12 sentinels and developed beautiful cities with neon lights. Eventually, the 12 blades were broken and locked after so many countless victories, and Izumo lost its dazzling gleam along with them. In this now empty Izumo, two blades were formed under the black sun as bearers of the world's destiny. These were named Origin and End, but all begun with humanity but shall end with Oni kind, because by the end of the war, humanity had turned or evolved into Oni from what seemed like an excessive usage of the divine power. Now, you Honkai Impact third players, if there's any info from you guys that could help with that theory or maybe even change what that, maybe maybe I'm completely wrong there, do let me know, please. I, I really want discussion from this. I want to know more about how Impact third correlates to this game, since I, do, I don't plan to play it, but I do like the lore of Starro. Now the dude in the trailer brings up the world of forging 70,047 blades by this point where you do see the two blades forged and everything. And he's adding on the 12 sentinels and the two world bearing edict edges by them. And we see that both the two blades were also destroyed by Acheron. Now after she destroys these blades, Acheron seems to use this shattering of these two blades to form one final blade, which was forged into naught. Naught meaning nothing. Now back to the original question. Is Acheron an emanator of finality or is she a self annihilator? Now, what is an emanator? The TLDR version is that it's a mortal who can directly draw upon the power of an Aeon. They aren't completely subservient to the Aeon, but they are as good as an emissary of the Aeon's wills to everyone else's eyes. Now you're like, oh, why would she be an emanator of finality? Okay, hear me out, hear me out. There's a quote from the description of the, I believe the first video, and this is the quote. Because everything that had happened will one day regress to the end, and everything that had ended is guaranteed to happen again. The universe undergoes an eternal recurrence under their shadow, and Izumo is nothing more than the footnote for an ellipsis. Now you're probably wondering, oh, why did you emphasize the word there? Well, the reason for that is because Honga Sara does it themselves. Whenever they refer to aeons and like using pronouns for them, they always put them in emphasis, like in a sort of emphasis. So you can see like they, their, them. So you specifically know that they're talking about an aeon. 
And the reason this is important is because there is a quote from Akeron herself in the second trailer, the Lord trailer. And this is the quote. She says, we long since strode into their shadow. And that's important for both of these theories, right? Their shadow. Their, that, that means an aeon, right? The people of Izumo eventually strove into a shadow of an aeon. This is where it gets so exciting for me, right? Because two theories alone can spawn from that one sentence. And you'll understand in a moment, if you haven't read much of the lore, especially the lore they share on their official Twitter accounts, then you'll understand in a moment. Bear with me, okay? So, everything ended, right? So one of the theories, is, in, in the end, Izumo disappeared, Takamangara disappeared, they're gone, they don't exist anymore, right? We saw in the end, she used the blade of naught, of nothing, to completely evaporate the, the, the dual planets, okay? So because of that, she could potentially be an emanator of finality. She might be able to draw on the power of the Aeon of finality, and that might be why she's so strong. Now we're gonna go into the second theory, the self-annihilator, which I am, man, everything just points toward this one. It really does. Okay, hear me out. Listen to this, this is official law. Self-annihilators are a group that lost their meaning of existence when they carelessly stepped into Ix, or I think it's Ix, I don't know, the Nihility Shadow, which is the Aeon of Nihility. It is specifically explicitly said in this official post from Honkai Star Rail, that the shadow of Nihility covers the stars equally and self-annihilators may form in any world. One of the things that all self-annihilators share is their existential properties, such as a corporeal body, mental cognition, and personal memories. They all will gradually fade away in their journey of self-annihilation. Some self-annihilators have their skin turn into something like rotten wood, full of holes and scars, some have their endocrine system disrupted, becoming unable to distinguish between pleasure and pain, and turning numb to everything. Some lose their memories, others lose their senses. Again, this is, they're, they're, but they're, what are they doing? They're on the journey of annihilation. I think, I think they knew what they were doing, dropping this info as well, like just before, just before the story pack. I am very, I'm like 90%, again, Honkai Impact third, guys, let me know if I'm wrong. Anyone who knows more about Star Wars lore a bit more than I do, please let, let me know. I, I would love to know. Am I taking the bait? Is this bait to make me think she's a self-annihilator? You know what I'm saying? All the signs lead there, right? We long since strolled into their shadow. We know self-annihilators are people caught in Ix's shadow. They're referring to an Aeon. Ix is the Aeon of Nihili. She is the path of Nihili. The developers themselves revealed on the 2.1 anniversary live stream that they had to question what Nihili is when making this character and that her lore was something they spent a lot of time working on. This is a character they spent a lot of time into working and I could definitely see this being a thing. And we know Akeron's hair color and her skin color goes a bit more pale and she gets those patterns and she changes. She visually changes when she uses these really strong powers of hers. And we know from the 2.0 main scenario quest that Akeron has a lot of trouble remembering things more than the average person, which was confirmed even more so in her trailer with Black Swan. And those are the two theories of this video, guys. I believe she's either an MA or a finality, or she's a self-annihilator. You guys need to let me know what you think down below. I am very interested in seeing how this will unfolds in the main story later on. I don't know about you guys, but if you're excited as I am, please let me know down below. And if you have any extra information you can share that might shed light on some of these theories or even have a completely different theory, there's nothing that I've even mentioned in this video, please let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for tuning in. Peace out.